Coming up on today's show. Manchester attempts a world record. We see if the new parcel service at the University of Salford is delivering results. Watch you don't slip, Disney on Ice is here. Hello, I'm Kate Troy and I'll have your forecast for the week ahead. Hello and welcome to Keys News. We start today's programme with news of a world record attempt. Would you know what to do if someone went into cardiac arrest? Our reporter Anam Ahmed went to a heart-stopping event in the city centre to find out more. The University of Manchester broke the Guinness world record of the number of compressions performed in a minute on Friday, with more than 900 people performing CPR on campus. The event used multiple dummies to raise awareness about why it is so important to enhance the public CPR knowledge and what to do in a crisis. Um, thousands of people every year die simply because somebody couldn't perform CPR or didn't perform CPR on them or were too worried about performing CPR and as a, as a result um, were unable to survive their sudden cardiac arrest. So to days like today, teaching as many people as possible not to be afraid of CPR, how simple the skill is and how to apply it properly um, will save countless lives. Training to save a life only takes 15 minutes and each volunteer taking part will be required to perform chest compressions, like this, for one minute before the next person takes over. As you're probably aware, the current record is held by the United States. The record was broken after just nine hours by John, who was one of the 80 volunteers participating in the event. It feels amazing. We've spent, been here since 7 o'clock this morning. We've been teaching people how to do CPR safely and how to properly break the record so nobody goes over. So it's been a lot of hard work, but we all really enjoyed it and I've had a great day. So I got to break a world record. Can't complain of that, can you? The university has certainly educated well over a thousand people about CPR, making Manchester a safer place for all. Anna Mahmoud reporting for Keys TV News. Well, one thing that has always been a focus in the region is the Manchester Science Festival. Now we are joined in the studio by Andrew Mia and Mike Wood, who are the organisers of this year's event. First of all, a huge thank you for joining us on the Keys News desk this afternoon. Now, I believe that the festival is now in its ninth year. So what can we expect from this year that we haven't seen in previous years? Well, this year, our main event at Salford University is our Science Jam Weekend, which is an extravaganza of all kinds of activities happening over a two day period bringing science and art together. That's one of the big themes of the whole festival for this year. And all of our work tries to do that kind of collaborative uh, endeavor. So Mike's work is Alienated Life, and that looks at the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. So I've been undertaking for the last two years now research in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone using motion activated cameras and uh, sound recorders to try and capture the, the biodiversity, the animal life within the Exclusion Zone and understand more about what happens when a nuclear disaster happens and people are taken out of this area. Lots of people think of Chernobyl as being this grey, crumbling, derelict space where nothing can survive. And that is anything but the case. So within the Alienated Life exhibition, what we're doing is we're using virtual reality, different forms of projection technologies, to actually put people into the Chernobyl environment and allow them to explore for themselves what it's like to be in an area that has been devastated by nuclear disaster, but in which wildlife is apparently thriving. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of the festival itself, so it starts tomorrow, yes, and um, that's kicking off with? That's right, so our opening event is the Back to the Future screening. So tomorrow is Future Day, that's the day they came back to the future in the second film in the trilogy. So we're inviting people to come in fancy dress to a special gallery screening at, at Gorilla Cinemas. And then on the 22nd, we have a science question time event happening just behind Media City at the new school that's just opened. Brilliant, well it sounds really, really exciting. Thank you very much for joining us uh, in the studio today. Thank you. Now, the Lowry Outlet Mall has caused upset to local residents after a new marketing strategy has put its location as Manchester. According to the new sign, the shopping centre is at Media City UK Manchester, even though the Lowry Outlet Mall is geographically in Salford. Now, we spoke to local people about their thoughts on the matter. And then one 
Okay, so I have to go to New York to paint the portrait of a very, very famous English boy called Alistair Cook. He said, well, you see, I say Manchester because if I said Salford in New York, they wouldn't know where it was. People have ideas about how to market stuff all the time, and so it's just another one of those things. It's, you see it happening everywhere all over the world. Well, that shouldn't be right. It should be Salford, shouldn't it? Oh, that's from shopping to parcel delivery, and it's only been weeks since Salford University opened its latest multi-million pound accommodation. But how exactly do they manage to keep track of so many parcels that come in every day for students? Well, we sent Tim Scott out to find out more about the Doddle service. Peel Park, a multi-million pound investment funded by Salford University, is home to over 1,000 students based across the institution. But how does Doddle help handle the huge volume of parcels sent and received every day? The first uh, difference uh, with Doddle is that we are dedicated to parcels. We don't dilute our business getting involved in other areas. We focus on Doddle, on, on parcels, with the aim of trying to make uh, collecting parcels uh, easy for both students and staff. We've not lost one single parcel. That's not something that we do. Our system means that we know where everything is at any one time. Doddle, the parcel shop business, launched its first campus store at the University of Salford in April 2015. However, the service is expected to be rolled out across 10 other universities this year. Until now, students at two accommodation sites relied on overstretched resources and impractical storage facilities, which often meant many students lost their items and failed deliveries. It, it's a lot more simple now. I mean, I'll just be in a lecture and I'll receive a text. Um, and it'll just say, you know, we've got your parcel here. So I just show them my barcode um, and they scan it. And one of them pops off into the back and comes back with my parcel about 10 seconds later. Doddle in coming months will continue to review their service and hopes to open stores within other halls of residences around the university. Jim Scott, Keys News, Salford. From delivering parcels to delivering on the pitch, Jordan's on the sofa with the latest sport. So how's it looking over there, Jordan? Thanks, Adam. We'll have last week's football action from Salford City coming up. However, we start today with motorsport as Salford University hopes to make it two British University Karting Championships in a row. Avid karting enthusiast and strategy consultant from the Salford Uni team, Ollie McKenzie, is with me to talk about it. Ollie, over a hundred, over a hundred, over thirty, not, not quite that many, over thirty other universities took part in the test day last week at Wilton Mill at the weekend. Um, first thing I want to ask, as a strategy consultant, what's your role? What does that entail? Well, I'd love to see the BUKC of over 100 universities <laughs> in for start, but mainly my role involves tyre management, fuel management, and basically sort of getting a set up right so the car is performing at its maximum for the maximum amount of time throughout the day. Okay, and we had the test in last weekend. How did that go for Salford? Um, constructive, constructive. We've got a lot of new people in the carts. We got obviously we've lost a lot of talent this year. Yeah. Like Jock and Holmes Stewart has gone to IndyCar. Mm -hmm. Craig Pratt who's gone to I think BCCC. So it's important we got new people in the and cart. The and the eighteen, the current champions. What chance have we got of retaining? This I think season? we've got a very good chance. We won't win as many races, but I think we'll definitely be up there. And the B team, we finished. 17 for the B team last year, mm. and if we can get a bit higher, then that's even better. That's excellent, thanks, Ollie. Now, a quick roundup of last weekend's football. There was mixed results for our teams. Macclesfield and FC United of Manchester both picked up narrow defeats to Dover and North Ferriby United, respectively. Altrincham fared slightly better with a 2 2 draw at Gateshead. Uh, two of our local sides, Curzon Ashton and Stockport County, played out a 0-0 draw between them, but Salford City did manage to register a 2-0 win at Sutton Coldfield Town. Joseph Crabtree was at the game. The Salford squad already depleted by the suspensions of Tunge Moses and Luke Clark received the further blow ahead of this clash with Sutton Coldfield as Richie Allen was ruled out for illness. They've taken the free kick quickly and Danny Webber is looking to be instrumental from the off here as he tries to work the ball into the box. He's come out for Hardcastle and Hardcastle lines up the shot. 
But Ren is wise to it. Solfen now. Looking to make use of their pace with a lofted ball. It's come out to Weber. He's going to try and work his magic again. That's a sublime pass into Poole. And a perfect cushion down. And an even better finish. Striking it into the corner. Using his laces. And that is brilliant. Once more, Salford look to capitalise on their strength out wide. It's another ball in behind. This time, Weber's on the end of it. He's lobbed the keeper perfectly. That is a fantastic finish from Danny Weber. He's really showing his class at this level. Salford's defence remained watertight for the rest of the game, despite high pressing from Sutton Caulfield, who went all out in the closing moments and very nearly received the consolation when Rebbe brought down his man right at the death. However, even had the referee awarded a penalty, it would have been little more than a consolation. Moving ahead to this week's crucial FA Cup fourth qualifying round fixtures, Altrincham will host local and divisional rivals Chester, Macclesfield will entertain former conference national side Alfred in town, Staley Bridge Celtic will play last year's FA Trophy winners North Ferriby United, Salford will welcome conference premier side Southport to Moor Lane, and other games include FC United of Manchester travelling to the lowest ranked side left in the cup, Sporting Kelsa. That's all for the sport, back to you Rachel. Thanks, Jordan. Now here's Kate with the weather. Hello, a very good afternoon to you all. Now we've had a little bit of a miserable start to the working week, but it hasn't been too bad. A few sunny spells and higher temperatures. Unfortunately though, it's not going to stay that way. It's going to turn much milder overnight as an area of low pressure starts to creep in. And because of this, we could start to see some unsettled weather. Tomorrow in particular being very wet and windy. Looking further on into the week now, and it's looking a little bit better, much drier and brighter weather on Thursday with a little patchy rain on Friday. The temperatures though, uh, they're staying pretty mild at first, then cooling down again on Friday, maybe between 10 and 12 degrees Celsius, so it looks like the winter weather is well on its way. I apologise for the technical difficulties we are currently receiving this afternoon. And finally, a sprinkle of magic spread across Manchester during this week as Disney on Ice returned to the city's arena. Our resident Tinkerbell, Carly Foster, put her skates on to experience the magic as, she, as it dazzled the crowd. <laughs> It's that magical time of the year again. Tonight, Disney on Ice is presenting its Worlds of Enchantments tour on this huge ice rink at the Manchester Arena. This ice extravaganza is a worldwide phenomenon, visiting eight UK cities over four months and will be touring all over Europe this year. It's always a great crowd in Manchester. We always have great shows here. We're going to bring a fantastic show to Manchester as we do every year. A little bit of a different show this year, we've got The Little Mermaid, we've got Cars, we've got all of our Toy Story friends and of course you've got some Frozen for you as well. The shows have been running for over 30 years and with new movies like Frozen becoming massive hits, kids are still coming to the ice to be swept off their feet. Disney's never going to die, the kids will always love it and there's always new movies coming out and Disney on Ice is great at putting that onto the ice. And the skaters are very talented to come out and perform each of these new roles and every show that we put together is just is great for that. With old timers like Mickey Mouse and Toy Story, parents also have the chance to relive some of their Disney favourites. The best part of Disney on Ice for me is seeing the reactions that the kids have every time and even the parents um, reliving their uh, favourite Disney classics. It's just so magical and just hearing the kids sing along. The cast enjoys it as well because each city and each crowd's a different crowd. It may be Disney on ice, but this show will warm everyone's hearts. Carly Foster, Keys TV News. What a lovely experience that must have been. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye. Don't forget to tune in to our new music show, Keys Session, on Thursday at 1.30. Uh, yes, and of course, Friday first, this Friday at 1.30. Goodbye.